Welcome to Everyday Christianity, where we explore how the principles of Christianity impact our everyday lives. Join us as we delve into the timeless wisdom of the Bible, applying its principles to build stronger relationships, find purpose in our careers, nurture thriving families, and deepen our connection with God. Hey, welcome back to Everyday Christianity, where we uh, focus in on practical application of the living Word of God and the Spirit of God that we would learn to live life God's way. I'm Steve Wood. I'm the pastor at Mount Pisgah Methodist Church. I'm joined by Joel and uh, Dwayne and Ray today as we begin to venture into a new subject that we hope will be helpful for you in self-reflection and growth. And uh, we praise God for your willingness to Make an effort to draw close unto Christ and rest assured the scriptures are true that as you uh, make your attempt and earnest effort to draw close to Christ, Christ will draw close to you. So today we're going to talk about one of the obstacles that exist uh, between us and our relationship with God. And interestingly enough, it also becomes an obstacle in our relationship with other people. And it's one of the most conniving, unknowing, uh, unconscious dynamics that affects us. It is the creeping sin of pride. And so interestingly enough, there's, I guess, hundreds of scriptures that speak to uh, the danger and the obstacle of pride and how it blocks uh, humility and pure love and those kinds of things. But yet we're torn in between uh, trying to live in total humility with God and yet express, exp- expressing pleasure, appreciation, victory, for instance, with our children when they accomplish something, we want to be affirming, mm-hmm. but you know, when we uh, go around the neighborhood and said, you know, uh, my son did this or my daughter did this, <laughs> knowing that <laughs> that's not true for everybody, that it quickly crosses the line. <laughs> Without further ado, Ray's got a great passage for us today. It comes from the prophet Jeremiah, to Jeremiah chapter nine. You know, let me let me preface this by a definition of pride that I looked up earlier. Um, and the particular um, dictionary said, pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements to be especially proud of a particular quality or skill. Wow. So this is going to be a convicting session here, personally. But Jeremiah 9.23 says, this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, declares the Lord. And yet this whole topic of of pride is convicting to me. Um, I'm just thinking through. The other night I was at a banquet, met this particular individual similar to my age, and we started talking back and forth, and he started telling me, you know, where he went to school, where he was brought up. And, I, you know, um, it was like after a while I realized, you know, this is kind of like a battle of who's the best of the best. <laughs> you know, he, he, um, he said, well, you know, uh, I went to – I think I'd talked about going to Georgia Tech. He said, yeah, I went to Georgia Tech, and then I went and, and did extended studies at Purdue. <laughs> so he trumped <laughs> me there. And then he talked about his grandkids, and I, I have, threw a ringer out. Well, he had four. I said, well, gosh, you know, we're we're up to number 12. <laughs> you know, so I found myself in this prideful position of battling back and forth, and it was like God really convicted me, like, Ray, you need to back down. You really are not in competition you just need to just be real and just share life on life. But that pride issue is like, I'm going to, I'm going to out Trump this guy. And it was wrong. And I'm sure he was battling with it. So I know personally pride is an issue that's so easy, you know, to just fall into and either knowingly or unknowingly it's, it's not what the Lord wants in our life. Yeah. Um, 
reminded by my mother used to say that uh, um, you didn't have to know that Dwayne was in the room because he's going to let you know that he was in the room. <laughs> and so, uh, um, when your own mother says that, man, that's painful, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not painful. It's an acknowledgement right. of the fact that you've got a lot of pride, young mm-hmm. man. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that, actually, because it's uh, – uh, it's a never-ending battle, but yet it has been one that the Lord has opened my eyes and has mm. been sanctifying me through the process mm. and molding and shaping me in a way that would um, take the focus off of me and put the focus elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, self-centeredness is... The uh, number one uh, sin, pride, mm-hmm. yes. that caused the downfall of of Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. and uh, it still impacts us sure. today. It's true. When we are looking out for ourselves and not looking out for those around us, it just becomes a cesspool. It does. Because... There's not this ever building. I like to tell people, like in your marriage, Ray, mm-hmm. you know, you and Vicky and Joyce and I, it, I serve her, she serves me, mm-hmm. I serve her, she serves right. me. And it just keeps building on. And there's this, it, it's, there's buildup of two people loving one another, honoring one another, and serving one another and not looking at themselves first, but putting their spouse first. Well, same thing applies in our relationships mm-hmm. with people that we encounter. Sure. We're called to look out for the interest of others. We're told that we need to get rid of pride. And, uh, Ray, I've been in marathon uh, mm-hmm. sessions that you went through the other night, and they get old after a, a while um, comparing. I, I think I think the comparisons we do – Today mm-hmm. are just it's it's sinful. It is. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Mm-hmm. God has given me. Right. I'm talking to myself right, right now. Right. God has given me a specific set of talents, as we talked about yesterday sure. in class. Mm-hmm. My job is to use those talents to do the best the job that He wants me right. to do with those talents, and. Ray, I don't care if mm-hmm. you've got an extra mm-hmm. uh, cattle right. or a head of cattle. Right. It doesn't matter to sure. me. I This is what God's given me dominion over. This is what I need to focus on. And to our listeners, mm-hmm. this thing called pride, it's the downfall of mankind because we want to sit on the throne and right. make these decisions and not God. And it just causes so much Division and turmoil mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and family strife, neighbor strife, mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Man, well, I've enjoyed chuckling uh, <laughs> through the first part of this podcast because I'd much rather chuckle at your struggle with pride <laughs> than my own. Right. And so I confess that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how you just unknowingly all of a sudden get there. So I'll share this embarrassing mm-hmm. story, I guess, but mm-hmm. maybe this would be helpful for those of you who are earnestly trying to follow Christ. And maybe you have had some victories. Maybe God's blessed you to uh, uh, give you a Timothy, so to speak, to mentor or even a Barnabas come alongside mm-hmm. of. Uh, Ten years ago, I uh, was invited as part of the Asbury board uh, to speak in one of the Tuesday Asbury Seminary chapels. And so, uh, we were there for an alumni board meeting and, you know, it was backslapping and we were celebrating <laughs> accomplishments and <laughs> I was all smiles and <laughs> I was, uh, I prayed up, prepared to preach. And I was just thinking how grateful I was that God had blessed me with this opportunity. Unbeknownst to me, they always have two people pray over you before you go into that mm. chapel service. And so 
I remember going into the little prayer chapel, the side chapel, and when they opened the door, there was Robert Coleman and Robert <laughs> Stamps. Woo! <laughs> Woo! And all of a sudden, the sobering reality <laughs> of my filthy rags <laughs> in comparison to how God had used these guys. And they prayed over me like, wow. you know, uh, I mm-hmm. was, they prayed over me as if I was a gift from God. Wow. Oh, man, it was <laughs> so convicting mm-hmm. uh, to think that, um, you know, Robert Coleman is a guy that uh, 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 mentored me, taught me when I was when I was a very young man. But mm-hmm. and and Bob Stamps, who is a dean of the chapel at Asbury, has spent many years as a dean of the chapel at Oral Roberts University, mm-hmm. written many books, and so it was just convicting. So hindsight, here's where I'm going with this: mm-hmm. is that I didn't realize that I was kind of puffed up. Pumped up, and other people were were affirming and encouraging, and that was just more inflating to my pride and ego. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I just have to confess that it it creeps in, it slips in, mm-hmm. but uh, the only thing that we can, as Paul said, boast about mm-hmm. is the goodness of God at work in our sinfulness. Mm-hmm. And that we have identity as sons and daughters of God. What a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole issue that we're talking about is not who we are, but whose we are. We are in Christ, and we should be comfortable and confident with that. But the Scripture says, don't boast of wisdom. Don't boast of our strength. Don't boast of our riches. And we just live in the world, but Jesus in his prayer, John 17, says, not that that uh, we would be taken out of the world, but that he would be with us in the world. So that's mm. the struggle is how do we deal with these issues in the world environment? Because guys are notorious for one upmanship, you know, and it's just it's just that pride of that that we all carry. So unfortunately, we always want to be a one up one up on somebody. And God wants us to be humble. Like you said, Dwayne, it doesn't matter how much we make, what we own, where we, what position we we sit in, um, what affiliations we have. That's all wood, hay, and stubble. But what's important is whose we are, and um, and and the fact that we know Christ, and that's where we get our identity. There's I mentioned this before. Unfortunately, there's a statement that the world says that. If you are what you do, and when your do doesn't, you aren't. <laughs> in other Good. words, you know, we as men are so wrapped up in our profession. I love what I do, and I know you all do too, but that's not who we are. That's what we do. But so many men get so wrapped up in that 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 becomes their identity, and it becomes their their station of pride of I'm the best such and such. And uh, we need to realize that's our tent making. God wants us to enjoy our labor but he doesn't want us to identify with that being of value to us of who we are. And so you're right. We've talked about this issue of pride. It's the very center of sin that permeated the world. As we look at the Old and New Testament, we see these issues of pride going all the way through the Scripture. So God warns us. He documents it. Say, be careful. I mean, I sit there and think of Solomon. We've talked about this before. God made him the wisest man in the world, but because of his pride, he he went off course at the end of his life. Yeah, um, and we can mention many other you know popular you know figures in the Old Testament that because of pride, God told David, "Don't count your armies," and he goes ahead and counts them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and again we talked about this. You know, with David, you know, and I think it's in First Samuel it says, at a time when kings were at war, most kings were at war. David was in his palace. Pride says, that woman is mine. So we need to be careful that we don't fall in those same footsteps of thinking that we are above what God wants and that we make the decisions and that we rule and reign in our lives. And um, and, and because it impacts others around us. When we fall into pride, we take others with us, whether it be family members, whether it be friends, coworkers. You know, we we bring them along 
in that downward pull of pride, and that's dangerous. I've, I've, when I'm uh, working with men, I constantly remind them about God lifts up the humble and he tears down the prideful. So to be careful on doing your sober self-assessment, find out where you are in relation to your self-centeredness and pride versus humility. We we see in Proverbs sixteen or Proverbs six, excuse me, uh, verse sixteen. There are six things the Lord hates. Yes, there are seven. Mm. An abomination to Him. An abomination. Mm. So the abomination of desolation is mm. the thing that that uh, Jesus mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, and and now we're talking about the abomination to God. And look at number one: a proud look. Mm-hmm. So you got pride, you got a proud look, and then in Psalm one forty seven six, it says the Lord lifts up the humble; He casts the wicked to the ground. Mm. So I, I guess we can imply in that that if you're humble, He'll lift you up, but if you're prideful, He's going to take you down. Mm-hmm. And uh, I tell myself. <laughs> I tell my sons, and I tell any man that I'm working with that, you know, be careful. Be careful about being too prideful. Be careful about that because uh, the Lord will humble you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, going back to Jeremiah 9, it occurred to me uh, as you were reading that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, everybody's boasting out of what they perceive to be there, so mm. to speak, like uh, the wise own their wisdom, yeah. the strong own their strength, mm-hmm. uh, the rich own their riches. Mm-hmm. But hey, <laughs> mm. one thing about God is the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh mm-hmm. away, and uh, we can be back to uh, point zero and starting from scratch in a, in a moment's notice if it's not for the glory of God. I do a daily exercise in my prayer journaling and on my, I have a little template I use, one pager. And on that template, uh, there is a place for me to confess, uh, sin mm. and, uh, to ask for forgiveness, to repent of sin. And, uh, over the years, I, uh, I, I have been mindful that sometimes I'll I'll just write down, Lord, bring to my mind and forgive me of mm. the sin I'm not yet conscious of mm-hmm. that existed. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. go ahead and shine a mm-hmm. light in that uh, mm-hmm. uh, dark room. Remember Robert Lloyd Mumford's little book, mm-hmm. yeah, and that uh, in those dark spots, so uh, I can at least confess what's there that's known to you and not uh, on my radar. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about just sins of the heart and sins of omission and commission. I remember reading an article just just kind of went through, you know, the conscious and unconscious aspects of um, how we allow sin to permeate our lives. And one thing that this particular writer of the article said, he said he thought the worst sin was prayerlessness. And that just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow. Because basically when you think about it, prayerlessness means – has a lot to do with pride. Hey, God, I've got this taken care of. I just need you to take care of these small areas. And it is an area of pride. Um, prayer, man, takes you to your knees. It basically is total humility before God. And I remember um, this one friend of mine who um, who leads a ministry, um, we were on a retreat, and, and he said, let's go to prayer. Let's do this. Let's lay prostate before the Lord. And they were probably you know, youth pastors in the room, we all got flat on our face and it was a humbling experience. Wow. I don't know if you've ever f- prayed flat on your face, but it is a very humbling experience because that's about as low as you can go. And um, it was just a good exercise of humility of just laying everything out before the Lord and saying, I am nothing. You are everything. And these are the prayers that I'm trusting. These are the things I'm trusting you for. And um, it just really kind of spoke to me that um, 
about this issue of prayerlessness being a major block and a major sin in our walk with God, you know. So um, on the note that uh, Pastor Steve made, I I heard recently, and I've been incorporating this into um, to my, my prayer life, but as I go to bed at night, uh, ask God to wake me up hmm. in the middle of the night if there's something that he he wants me to know specifically wow. what mm-hmm. kind of what am I not doing wow. that I should be doing? Mm-hmm. Lord, wake me up in the middle of the night because you know that you're you're focused. Then if you, I don't know if you've yeah. ever had this happen, but you wake up in the middle of the night and you got something on your brain. Yeah, it's hard to go back to sleep until you actually do something and deal with it and, and get I, it reconciled. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and so. uh Prayerlessness is is uh, mm-hmm. a, a, an issue. I, I think the other another thing that we've got to do with is, and I, I alluded to this already, but this this comparison game, mm-hmm. this comparison where we divide right. and we compare, and and we do it all the time. We do it, and our society right. does it. Our government does it. I I took a survey today on. My attendance at a football game over the weekend, <laughs> and they wanted to know. They wanted to know what race I was, what my wow. income level was, and wanted to know all these things. I'm like, I'm not. It's a lot of. I would answer some of the questions that I didn't think were divisive right. items, but you know, a lot of the things that people ask these questions, it's like, why? You're asking this question so that you can parcel and divide people mm. and say, okay, I'm going to pit this group against this group. And once you start pitting groups against one another and they compare themselves to one another, pride takes over. Right. I, I can feel it when I'm I'm not participating in it. I'm just watching it going on. And you associate with one group over the other. Your pride starts. I can feel it welling up inside of me. And it's mm-hmm. like, Lord, this is... This is right. not good. I should not be feeling this. I've got nothing to do with this. And yet hmm. that pride, because we compare right. ourselves to one another as opposed to really what we should be doing is saying, Lord, thank you for what you've given me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to do everything I can with what right. you've got. And if you need to you know, knock me in the head because I'm not doing something hmm. right, please do it. But – Mm-hmm. You know, this is. I'm not trying to compare myself to Ray or Pastor Steve right. or anybody else. I'm just trying to be what you want me to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, what a, what a good word! You know, one of the things we can do as we kind of close the podcast today is encourage you to latch on to the just the last part of that Jeremiah 29. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 9:23, that the Lord loves kindness, justice, righteousness. He delights in those at work in us. The struggle, we'll all admit, is if we don't remember whose we are, Hmm. then the world will tell us who we are, Mm -hmm. and you'll never never win in those Mm -hmm. kinds of comparative Mm -hmm. uh, scenarios, even as a Christian. Hey, we'd love to come alongside you and help you with your journey with Christ. You can reach us at Everyday Christianity at org. There's also some show notes there attached in the website. And anything we can do to encourage you forward in your journey with Christ, that you would persevere in it, and that you would grow in your confidence to share Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hey, that's what we're here for. Hope you have a blessed day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. If you found value in today's episode, don't forget to subscribe and share the podcast with your friends and family. For any questions or feedback, feel free to reach out to us at everydaychristianity at mountpisgah.org. And you can find all the relevant links in the show notes. Until next time, God bless.